Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a beautiful ISS solar transit video. I'm going to go over all the equipment you need, all the software you need, and all the steps it takes to get there, along with a few tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. I'm starting off the video with a few examples of ISS transits that I've taken. In the second example, which is mostly in monochrome, you can see that the actual transit itself occurs very quickly, typically in between 0.5 and 0.7 seconds if it falls across the entire disk. So you really have to be prepared in advance. Here's some general overview of some of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're doing an ISS video. You need to plan very carefully. A key resource is transit-finder.com, which we're going to go into in a few moments. You want to ensure that all your settings are correct in SharpCap for capture and that you're focused as sharply as possible. You want to start the capture at least one minute early because sometimes the ISS appears a little earlier or a little later than you expected or a little bit to the left or the right than you expected. The post-processing steps include trimming the video down to a normal size extracting the frames that you need, doing any uh, adjustments on levels or sharpening and coloring, and then finally when you have the finished frames, recombining them back into a video. When you're planning for an ISS capture, your best friend is transit-finder.com. What you can do is select from the map your location on the Earth, ensure you're as accurate as possible because even a few meters makes a difference. Check the start and end dates for when you want to check transits in your area and the preferred travel distance, and then you can do calculate, and you'll see a nice group of settings of the different places that transits are going to occur. One of the things I want you to look for is here's an example of three transits happening. The first two have a ISS angular size greater than 60 arc seconds. You do not want to take an ISS transit video when the ISS is far away. The third example, the ISS is only about 25 arc seconds across in diameter. And if it's in that point in its orbit, you can see the distance is shown as 1100 kilometers versus 430 kilometers in the, the first two examples, 440 or so. And you want the ISS apparent size to be as large as possible. So my rule of thumb is 55 arc seconds or more, preferably more than 60 if you can. So that's the first thing to take in mind. Second thing is, if you have an example where the sun and the transit path looks like this, even though the ISS angular size is great in this example, it's not quite on the center line. And I found that while this software is very helpful, it's not perfect. And I've been out sometimes and been completely skunked. I've also been out and expected it to go across the center and just skirts across the very edge. So the more benefit you can give yourself to be right on the center line, you know, move your location and set your telescope up somewhere where you're right on the center line. And then if there is some deviation from what's expected, you still got a good chance of capturing a transit. In this business, seconds matter. So I like to use the app Atomic Clock so I can have my phone right beside my laptop and I can see to the millisecond exactly what time it is according to atomic time. Don't waste your time trying to do an ISS transit unless the sky conditions are good. By good, I mean at least a four or a five on the astrospheric seeing scale. In this example, you can see at 9 a.m. Sunday morning, we have excellent seeing, which would be a five out of five. Just to the left and right, you can see the slightly brighter blue color, which is representing a four out of five in seeing. Anything worse than that, don't bother because you won't get the image resolution you're looking for. Generally speaking, white light is going to give higher resolution than hydrogen alpha, the solar scope, but either one can work. The reason white light is better is it tends to be a much faster exposure. If you use a refractor, be sure to use a solar approved Herschel wedge. You can get great ones from Lund Solar Systems, either in two inch or one and a quarter inch configurations. It's also good to use a UV IR cut filter on your camera. For a camera, I like to use either the ZWO-174MM or QHY-5-111-174. These both have fast rolling shutters. 
You can use a Barlow, but that increases the risk you're going to miss the ISS unless it's crossing directly over the center of the disc and you're positive you're in the right place at the right time. Regarding sharp cap settings, you want to be sure you have a fast exposure. You want to have 0.5 milliseconds or shorter for your exposure time so you can catch detail on the ISS. For focusing, it's good to zoom in on any sunspot region you can see on the sun and then go to a high magnification and get the focus the best you can so you're sharply focused and tighten down the focuser when you're done. You should set your color space on sharp cap to mod 8. You'll see here that's giving me 134 frames per second. If I go to mod 16, that drops to about 77 frames per second. So we want to get as maximum frames as we can. You also want to have your, your capture area to be set as square as possible. I don't have an option for 1200 by 1200. This is close enough, 1440 by 1200, so that's what I'm going to use. You want to get this frame rate as high as possible. You can play around a little bit with the gain. I wouldn't push the gain very far because you don't want to create any noise in the system. The histogram should be somewhere between 70% and 90%. So I can increase this a bit. I don't want to wash it out either. But uh, that's basically the settings for SharpCap. You'll want to use the SER player to see which frames contain the ISS images. You'll find that when you play the data, there's going to be an awful lot of nothing going on. There it is there. Find it again. Okay, I'm going to reverse direction. goes. So once you've done that, <clears throat> you can identify exactly which frames are the ISS. And you can make a note of which ones they are. In this case, this is frame 3964 out of 5010. So on a separate sheet of paper, make a note of which frames are the ones that you need to extract. And then we're going to move over to PIPP software to extract those frames. We're going to use PIPP to extract the desired frames. So to do that, we first select under our source files the file that has the, the data, the SER file we looked at previously. And then we're going to look at under input options, we want to click limit frame range and put the number of frames where the ISS just two or three frames before it appears and two or three frames after it has disappeared off the limb of the sun. Put that there. Uh, we're going to leave all these other settings pretty much to the default levels. And then for the output option, I like to choose a TIFF. So what it's going to do is extract every frame and create a separate TIFF out of it. You could also create an animated GIF at this point or an AVI. I like to do further sharpening and adjustments on the data before we do that, but that would be a shortcut to get to a fast answer. You wanted to do that. When you're all done, you select do, do processing and click start processing and it's all done pretty quickly. And then you can go to the appropriate file and here it is. And these are all the frames. So if we were to open one of these frames at random, you'll see it's a separate TIFF frame that shows the ISS. Our next step is to process these individual frames to get the best picture we can and to add color if you want. The next step is to sharpen and color the image so you can then recombine the processed images into a new final video. So what I'm going to do is open up an example image. Just pick this one and I'm going to create a macro which I can then apply to all the rest of the images in the sequence. So I'm using Affinity Photo. You can do this with Photoshop or any other favorite tool. So I'm going to record the macro. First step I'm going to do is Levels, Control L.
and this is all very much personal taste. I'm going to do a crop, bring in this dark edge, which we don't need. Same thing over here. I'm going to do a uh, sharpening. So I'll create a new live adjustment layer, clarity, and then I will zoom in a bit on the ISS. Let's see what happens. That's probably too much. Again, it's my very much personal preference. I'm going to there. And then I'll go back to the full image. And then finally, I'm going to do an adjustment for color. I'm going to make the document RGB document. I'm going to go to curves. Red. This over here. Just select blue. This over here. And again, until you get the color you like. What's nice about using curves instead of levels is you can see you're getting a much nicer gradient here to the edge. It's more of a, a warm orange at the edge and yellow in the center, which I think is uh, aesthetically more pleasing. So I'm pretty happy with that for a macro. So I'm going to stop the macro. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Transit June 5. Say OK. And then I'm going to apply a new batch job. And I'm going to have output as JPEGs. I'm going to save into uh, location. I'm going to give it a new name. I'm going to call it color images. Okay, select folder. And I don't need to save it as an affinity photo. I have to select the macro I want to apply. That's this one we just created. And I have to, of course, add my source files. So these guys. So I'll do a shift click for that. And they're all populated. And I'm happy with everything. Make sure I'm saving it to the right place. I've got a JPEG being saved. I've selected all the files. And I'll simply say OK. And it's going to run through a process of running that macro. So we are on the home stretch. Our final step is to create the video. I like to use PIPP because it's free and has limitations on size. You can also use easygif.com, but it has limitation of 100 megabytes of total file sizes, which as you can see here is going to be a problem for us with our file sizes. So we start off with um, adding the image files, which I've already done, and then we can simply skip right to the output options, select an animated GIF, select the frame rate you want, and it's all pretty simple, and do processing, and start the processing, runs pretty quickly, takes a little bit longer to create the actual video itself once it's processed all the files. But when you're done, you're going to have a beautiful sharpened color image of the sun with the ISS transiting across. And if everything works out well, you'll have a great result. All right, so that's complete. Let's have a look at the file. There's our PIPP GIF, and there's a beautiful sharpened image of the ISS transiting the sun. Hope that was helpful, and I look forward to seeing the results you guys all come up with.